Now, the unit has been designed, you know, to evoke curiosity in students about the significance of classification in biology and hopefully uh, motivate them to explore the biodiversity around them. The vocabulary that we've used in this unit is something that um, students are likely to come across, both in class and in their textbooks. But for any user of this unit, it would be very useful to go through the links that have been provided to the middle school science and geography curriculum. Now let's talk about the content of the unit. Now we all know that uh, classification systems are not part of nature, right? Um, scientists have developed them to uh, describe the diversity of organisms in the environment around us. And the term that we use for that, as everyone knows, is biodiversity. Now, an understanding of biodiversity, it allows us to learn about ways in which living organisms live, interact with each other. And these interlinked relationships are responsible for supporting all life on Earth. Now, scientists use classification in a couple of ways. One is to identify a living organism, and the other is to group it with um, other organisms that have similar features or properties. Now, understanding the history of scientific developments is very, very helpful in the learning process because it reveals to us how scientific thinking, ideas, and concepts evolved over time. Uh, we also learn about the people their inspirations and challenges as they try to understand natural phenomena and processes. Now, through this unit, you can give students a glimpse of the history of biological classification. For instance, um, not many people know that the modern biological classification system, which is based on Carl Linnaeus's work, has actually drawn extensively from the Hortus malabaricus for information about many Asian plants. Now, the Hortus malabaricus uh, was published between um, 1678 and 1703, and it's a compilation of plants from the Malabar region of Kerala. It was compiled by the governor of Dutch Malabar, but it is based on the knowledge of traditional Ayurvedic physicians from that area. You know, they had extensive knowledge on the medicinal properties and on the other biological properties of these plants. We've also suggested several activities in this unit um, that students could use to explore for themselves the concept of classification and also to think creatively about it. Uh, posters have also been included in the unit which you can use um, to explain how uh, biologists group different kinds of organisms, you know, leaves, bacteria, insects, spiders, etc. How scientists and geographers classify based on geography, local environmental conditions. Now, moving from classification to biodiversity, how do you make that connection? Right? Once again, you can make use of history. We've included some posters here, which can be used to understand traditional knowledge and practice of classification and biodiversity. Now, this knowledge actually continues to be used by forest dwellers, fishers, pastoralists, farmers, and those who live close to nature. Another important learning from this unit is that by classifying organisms, our knowledge about and the relationship between them increases. For instance, when we classify animals and plants based on where they live, it um, allows us to study and to understand that area, how the organisms in the area live, how they interact with each other, how they shape that environment, how the environment shapes them. So with all this information, we are then able to study and determine what might happen to these organisms if there is a change in the environment of the area. The unit also includes key takeaways and learnings, which you can use to reinforce what was learned during the session. So, please go ahead and use this unit extensively. We look forward to hearing from you. We look forward to hearing about your experiences as you use this unit. And do write to us at Bari Education with any suggestions that you might have to make this unit more exciting and useful.